afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another episode of ECC Essentials. Today is exciting for us because we are going to be talking about some Dispatch Week ideas for themes and awards and resources and whatever else uh, comes to mind as we talk about Dispatch Week, National Public Safety Telecommunicator Week, which is coming up next week. I have Erica Lakey here as well with me again. And so we are going to go ahead and just dive in to all the ideas. If you are watching live, feel free to put in the chat where you're tuning in from and how your center is celebrating, or if there's maybe a specific idea you're looking for, and we will go through those as well. So Again, we're going to be pretty casual on this discussion today as we just talk about different ideas. Um, So I am going to pass it to you, Erica. And if you just want to start off with maybe some of your favorite things that you've done in the past um, or what you're looking forward to for this year in your center for Dispatch Week. Yeah, thanks. So I've already seen people starting to talk about how they know it's coming. It's every second week of April. It's, It's the same every year. Um, But already people are saying, hey, I don't think anyone's going to do anything for us. And I think that you just can't wait for someone to step up and recognize you. You guys got to celebrate yourselves. So there's already plenty of time. I know it seems like it's it's right here, just around the corner, but there is still time. Um, But yeah, some of the things that we do at our center, um, we do have the dress up days. I think everyone likes the themed pictures, but a lot of people don't like that. So we let them wear business casual or even T-shirts. So that's something that's that's free that we can just put out there to your people. And it, it's a nice change. Yeah. We do I let think, them kind of pick the theme days. Um, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, yeah, I think it's good to like have dress up or dress down. I know especially mm-hmm. those agencies who are usually in really formal wear, like that's one of the, the biggest perks is just getting to dress down. Yeah, it, for sure. And then I get it. Not everyone wants to go out and buy stuff for theme day. It's already a hassle when your kids have dress up days and you have to go find a Hawaiian right. shirt the night before. Um, <laughs> but something as simple as that. And then you can do all the cheesy little things that go along with that theme. And, and some people just have a lot of fun doing that. And and that's something that I think if even if just a couple of people do it and not everyone's on board, that's okay. Because I think that positive attitude is contagious and just continue with your plans and don't get discouraged. Oh my gosh. These are all great themes. I wish there was enough days to do them all. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. So since you kind of started off, started off with the theme, um, if you're watching this video, you can see a list here again, uh, those watching live, feel free to drop in the chat. What themes are, is your center doing or what themes have been your favorite in the past? It's really though, like, I mean, as creative as you want to be. I think it's, I love it. I see the golden girls on there and that would be so much fun. Yes. There is a center in Georgia uh, who last year actually did the golden girls as their theme. Um, and they were nice enough because I know I have an obsession, uh, borderline unhealthy. They actually sent me some of the things from their um, celebration that they'd handed out as well as a specialized shirt they had made uh, for everyone in their comm center. So that was really exciting. Um, but I know that other you know, centers have done it. Uh, in the chat, someone said Monsters, Inc. I love that movie. Oh, wow. That would be fun. Yeah. I have a, have a very specific theme and then every person is maybe a different character. I love that. Like it's like Halloween all over again. It is. Yes. And you really can like use it for both. Yes. Um, <laughs> you're doing going back old school theme, dress up days. Yeah. And then you just get to. Oh my God. It. Is old school 90s? <laughs> it's so yeah. Old. I feel like. We have the to, early 2000s, yeah. old what? school. <laughs> no judgment, but like, what is old school? I, mean, I know, right? Depending who you ask. <laughs> yeah. What is that? That's so great. Mean? But yeah, the superheroes, we actually did um, superheroes and super villains. So that was a lot of fun. We got to pick a villain and dress like it. And I forgot her name, but it was Sandra Bullock's character from the Minions. So mm-hmm. I was her. And then I had like two giant Minions. So yeah, we got really creative um, and kind of put a twist on it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, I love Kelly's. I like dress like a dad and also dress like you did in high school. I think those are fantastic. Oh and if anybody watches like the Facebook videos or the TikToks, also look for the videos for like the bachelorette and bachelor parties, because I feel like some of those themes, like the dress like a dad or like dress like your spouse or even those you might be able to incorporate. Um, 
And, and for those who are like, yeah, we, we tried, we've posted them. It's kind of fallen flat. Uh, yeah. Wait and see what happens. You never know kind of if somebody might, you know, even just like a shirt or something, people mm -hmm. be really surprising. I found like people who I didn't think would participate in things actually really enjoyed it. Yeah. Especially if you don't have to go out and buy something, even if it's swinging by Goodwill or the thrift store on the way home, that, that makes it so much fun, I think. And then honestly, Amazon returns. Um, <laughs> but we also did um, Wacky Tourist Day because we live in an area with a lot of tourists. So we didn't have to go out and buy a lot. We already had a lot of this stuff. So that was fun because, yeah, that was just something a little different. And, and even if you have to go to the store after work, it's even funnier because, you know, no one knows you're dressed up. You just blend right in with everyone. <laughs> you're like, no one even knows. I so, know, right? They just think I'm on vacation. Bobby said 80s, 90s, 2000s. Literally most of our staff are in the 20s, so that's old school to them. Oh like, gosh. okay, maybe, maybe 90s. Uh, it gives me some heart palpitations to think, like, 2000s are thrown back, but we won't get into yeah. that. <laughs> it's a little concerning. Um, but, yeah, there's so many themes that you can just go crazy. I don't even think I put, like, Star Wars on this list that I have up. Um, you could do minions, you could do really whatever. It's so funny. Um, I see Western on there and we put on our dress up day, we put country day, meaning Western. And I knew that cause I helped come up with the flyer. So I did a spin on it. So I did a cowboy hat and then for my belt buckle, I did a flag cause I'm part Korean. So I was like, I'm country day. <laughs> so, so I always try to take it just a little bit farther and, and do something a little crazier with it. But yeah. I mean, that's, that's the fun of it. Cause they just, you don't know what people are going to show up in. Like you no. said, yeah, it could be someone that surprised you. So they already know I'm going to do something that's a little more extreme. So now I've, I've raised that bar for myself, but I like it. It's a great challenge. Yeah, it definitely is. Um, in the comments, do we have favorite concert t-shirt, taco Tuesday, holidays, barbecue, uh, sports teams is always an easy one. I feel like that's one most people don't have to go shopping for. They can just, Ooh, I like that concert favorite concert t-shirt. Um, uh, yeah. You can learn a lot about people, what they show up in. <laughs> right. You really can. Um, <laughs> so whether you're looking for a theme, um, we will go next to awards and then go into resources. I think that'll work kind of best as we go through. So the other thing I love about Dispatch Week, and I don't know if you do it in your center, Erica, uh, is when we have done some type of awards or even um, maybe not like an award specifically, but certificates where we've made them for each other, even outside of Dispatch Week, because it gets really fun. Mm -hmm. So not sure if anybody watching or listening does those. Uh, but here again on the screen, um, you can catch the replay on YouTube, though, as well, for those of you listening, um, is a list of potentially all the different awards, some fun, some serious that you can do That's for awesome. your center as well. <laughs> And really, it can be whatever. I, um, I'm a really, I feel like I would win the Coffee Holic Award. Um, that would be made for me. And then I like some of these, though, like the Super Snacker Award. Because I like it because I feel like it shows that you know people. Or like the Little Miss Sunshine or mm -hmm. Old Faithful, you know, that person you can depend on. Because it shows that you really know that person and that you see mm -hmm. it. It doesn't go yeah. on. The one that jumped out, I would probably get the walking encyclopedia award. <laughs> I'm more like the useless trivia one, but yeah, these are all great now. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to do this now. <laughs> yes. And I, I love, love categories. Uh, the, um, one of the other ones I just think is fun is like the duct tape award. So like that person who can fix anything. Uh, Cause I think almost all of us probably have that person in mm -hmm. our side. And then um, I don't know how some people would receive it necessarily, but that Bermuda Triangle Award, you know, the person with the work area where things go and never come back. Um, we did that. It was the Loch Ness Award. It did not go over <laughs> very well for that person, but everyone else kind of giggled. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Be careful. but I know, right? You really have to know your audience when you give these out. But yeah, hopefully. Yes. There was... Oh, my gosh. I one time found a little porcelain toilet. Um, and Goodwill, and I spray painted it gold, and we gave out the potty mouth award. So that was fun <laughs> picking that person. We all knew who it was going to be. So yeah, and they, she gladly accepted it. She was so proud. Of it. Yeah, and you can get like <laughs> creative 
I love these too, because you can get so creative, right? So mm -hmm. you could do just like a certificate, which is nice. Or like for the duct mm -hmm. tape award, you could like literally get them a roll of duct tape or for the yes. elephant memory award, that person who never forgets anything, like spray paint <laughs> a little elephant gold and like put it on a piece of wood. And like, that's your trophy. Oh, um, in the comments, Amy Ooh. said, if you could do black cloud award, Etsy shop sells black cloud pins. Those oh. probably also too, like black cloud, the bad luck, because we also, you know, <laughs> have that person. That See the golden them. toilet award. Yes. Go out and find a little toilet somewhere and make it a thing. Yes. <laughs> Maybe you'd pass it around every year. I don't know Please. how Evan would, would you know, think, feel about that if it became a con. But, you know. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but I also love that too, like this idea of, you know, some type of award that you like pass around every year. Um, yeah. Yeah. The cheesier, that. the better. I, yeah. We're very sentimental. We'll hold on to stuff and, and we definitely yeah. wouldn't lose it if it was the, the coveted, you know, toilet award. Yeah. And maybe, I just want to explain know, it every time there's a tour that comes into your center, maybe. <laughs> or like some type of award too, that maybe it's maybe a tougher topic or like, it is someone mm -hmm. who's had a lot of hard calls, but it's a very specific trophy. And then like the next year, the person who's had, mm -hmm. you know, those kinds of the most or whatever it is. Uh, yeah. To maybe even like vote on the wackiest call or like the craziest call and just have like a few different scenarios. And then, you know, your peers votes. Okay. That was the craziest call. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's and always that one call. You're like, yeah, I can think of a few in, in my career that, like, that we'll never top that again. And then sure enough, we do. Right. You're like, and then we did. Yes. It's really I love that. Easy. You can use like Survey Monkey or Google Forms, mm -hmm. any of those to create like a quick voting. If you don't want to do it on paper, like create, be able to send out to people to have them vote anonymously, or you could do it on paper. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you can do the, the normal ones, the more um, respectable ones, if you will, you know, trainee of the year, dispatcher of the year, uh, supervisor of the year, those kinds of things as well. Um, you know, do mean something a little different than the fun awards, uh, but also good, good to do, especially if you have really good criteria. Yeah. Them. Oh, I love that Kathleen, the fake Emmy awards and hand them out during call scenario days. See, oh, that would be something I would strive for every time. <laughs> yes. If you're, I really uh, get into the accents when I do the scenarios and I'm like, I'm just trying to help you guys get ready. <laughs> right. <laughs> What is the, uh, I feel like a terrible office fan. The Dundee Dundee. Award. Yes, yes. I was like, think of the word. Yeah, you could do those. You could buy. Oh my gosh. And I love it. Now I'm like, oh my gosh, I have so many ideas. There's still time. I, I can do this. <laughs> right. How many trophies? How many yes, things? Amazon Prime. It'll be here tomorrow. <laughs> exactly. It's so true. Um, yeah, this would be great in a group setting to pass out. And then the, everyone, maybe they don't know, but everyone gets something, you know, maybe start out serious and then get a little bit funnier and then watch everyone kind of realize, oh my gosh, th these are getting crazier and crazier. <laughs> yeah. And I, think it's, I think it's good to, um, to do enough. So that way everybody, or maybe, you know, with your more serious ones, you have your mm -hmm. criteria, people vote, you know, do it that way or however mm -hmm. you want to handle those. But with the, with the fun ones, you know, pick out the same number as the number of people you have either in your center or on your shift. You know, if you have a really mm -hmm. big center, it gets a little tougher, but um, so that way, yeah, everybody walks away with something. Yeah. Cause they think that makes that fun, especially if even you have a smaller center. Yeah. Even if it's just a, a piece of paper, a template, you can look up silly certificate templates and then fill it yeah. out. Cause I know that's what we did. And they even include some of the blank ones where you can make up your own categories. Cause there's always, that weird nickname or weird something going on in a place. So that would be fun. So even squad to squad, it's different. Yeah. It, yeah. And especially when you have like shifts that are close mm -hmm. and like they do it, then they like really know, like, if you know your people, it can get really, really fun. Yeah. Um, there's just so many ideas. That's a great way to make new people feel like they're part of the team. And it's, it's, it's as yes. long as it's all in good fun, I think, you know, definitely don't get you know, the, the nasty side of things, but keep it fun. Because remember, if you have to sit in front of HR and explain why you have this piece of paper. <laughs> right. So, you know, you got to have that in the back of your mind. But yeah, you can have a lot of fun with this. Yes, I think that's a there's good still time. <laughs> don't do anything that's going to end you like. Disclaimer. But Halcyon Eric has said <laughs> the no. golden toilet award. We did not. We we said we did not tell you to do anything that would get you into <laughs> disclaimer. <laughs> <laughs> but go go crazy. Canva has certificate templates and makes it mm -hmm. really easy. And all you have to do is then print them out. 
Um, and I just know, like, I really feel like even the people who we think may not love it or something, like we would be surprised later on down the road to find out like they kept it. Even if it's like in, you know, a pile of things, like they still kept it, like it meant something. Yeah, for sure. I think that's a great, really inexpensive way. I mean, you already have the paper in your office, hopefully. And then, yeah, just find a time to, to do it and let everyone know. And it doesn't have to be a big to do ceremony, obviously, but, you know, just something fun, maybe at a briefing or, you know, right before you go on shift. Yeah. Or even during shift, depending what time of day. And, you know, I don't want to say that Q word, but, you know, right. <laughs> you have some downtime. Yeah. Or s- sending out that, like, you know, email, that center wide email that lists everybody who received oh, yeah. that. So that way everybody knows. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's contagious. Maybe another squad will say, hey, that's cool. They're doing that. You know, well, we, let's one up. I mean, that I can, I can do yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, better. We, we are always, very competitive. Yes. I feel like as dispatchers, we're always like, <laughs> we add competition to it. We'll do it. Um, but along with those are like other activities. So we love to hear what other people do. I know in the past, like centers I've been at, we've done like getting to know you things where we, mm-hmm. um, every day of the week, we like put a little, you know, brief info, getting to know you about different people. Um, I know some centers do like the baby pictures. You have to match them up. Um, Mm -hmm. One year I did, um, you know, people could write positive feedback or a compliment um, and then, you know, just put it in a box. And then at the end of the week, I handed them out to people. And then I actually drew prizes for um, one person who had submitted one and then one person who had received one. Uh, So that's something. Oh, I love that. Yeah. If you submit a a nomination, you're also in a, you know, a drawing too. That's a great idea. Yeah. And they were, you know, their compliments and positive feedback, which people might not always get. So it was kind of good too. Cause then at the end of the week, they got like this positive boost yeah. um, from each other. So that was fun. Um, what kind of stuff have you guys done? Yeah. When you mentioned the the baby pictures, that was great. Um, we did have a few people say, please don't put this on social media. And we had no problem with that. We said, yeah, we, we won't put this out there. I mean, um, I, I respect that. So, but yeah, a lot of people participated. And we had a lot of fun trying to guess who was who as a baby. Cause then we realized um, all newborns look the same. And then we kind of changed it. We're like, maybe if you're a toddler or preschool picture, that would be easier. Cause it, it was getting hard. Right. No, that's yeah. True. I'm like the only Asian one. So I'm like, you know, it's me, <laughs> but it was fun. Yeah. Going through the pictures. Um, and some of them you could kind of tell, like if it was, if, you know, someone was a little bit older just by, you know, the look of it, but then but that was just part of the mystery, the clue of trying to figure out who it was. So that was fun. We, I think we called it before they were dispatchers. And then we did, we offered a prize if you were able to go through and guess who everyone was correctly. And I don't think, um, I think we had over 50 different, you know, pictures up there and no one could guess. Exactly. Everyone they got really close, but fun um, being able to, to go up and walk by and see that on a break. Yeah. It, yeah. And it's also kind of just something fun to do. Like when you have a down moment or mm-hmm. even just like with whatever's going on, like it gives you a break <laughs> yeah. to think about something else. Because again, a lot of times we're so competitive that we're like, I'm going to match all of these up. <laughs> That's right. I'm win this. I know we've done um, like, you know, put, candy in a candy jar and like you have to guess how much is in there and then you like get that um of course food days taco bars yes all um, the food days <laughs> yes um it, you know it, again there is still time so if you haven't reached out to people in your community reach out to those restaurants uh, mm-hmm. that might be willing to provide some food or maybe it is something where they just provide it at a discount and that's something that you can either fit in your center budget and what is allowed or you know maybe a personal cost um you never want to say that like people need to come out of pocket you know like a lot of money by mm-hmm. any means but if you do and you are able like just little stuff here and there, I think really it makes people feel really supported and celebrated. But as you mentioned in the beginning, also making sure if you're not a supervisor or a director or whatever, it a thousand percent does not mean you can't do things for people in your center. Like you don't have to wait for them. Yeah, exactly. And this is one of those unfortunately obscure holidays that not everyone realizes because it's not on everyone's calendar. Um, but, but we always know it's the second week of April because, you know, as long as you've been in the industry, we know that. So I don't think it's, it's not like it's Christmas. It's, it's so obvious. It's Christmas. It's all in the store. It's everywhere. So yeah, you do have to get a little creative and you have to plan early. 
because I know, at least for me, I'm a procrastinator. I like to wait until up until the deadline. And sometimes you just can't do that, especially if you decide to go with like handwritten cards or you do the surveys for the awards. You have to put a little bit of planning into it, but just team up with someone who's like minded or just encourage everyone. Hey, let's let's celebrate ourselves, guys. What should we do? And then, of course, you know, you might get some pushback, but that's okay. Keep pushing forward. And even if it just comes from you, I think that like you did, like having someone write a nice word about someone or you know, something that is, is very small. It can mean a lot to someone because it can be a pretty, you know, thankless job, but hearing thank you from your coworker goes a long way. Yeah. Um, there's just so much stuff. It can even be as simple as I'm telling you right now. I'm pretty sure Dollar Tree, if you have one, <laughs> has black and yellow streamers or black and yellow balloons or black and yellow tablecloths or black and yellow party decorations that, you know, you can take 10 bucks and easily come out with stuff um, to decorate Hobby Lobby, party yeah. store, anything. And then like as soon that. as admin start seeing these decorations go up, they might say, hey, what's going on? And that might make them realize, oh, yeah, this dispatcher week, it's coming up. So, so maybe they did forget just because, like I said, it's not advertised in the store. Um, but, yeah, but I think with graduation, the black and gold theme is everywhere. Oh, yeah. So definitely yeah. take advantage of that. Decorate early. So when they come in Monday morning, they see all these decorations like, oh, what did we forget? And then, you know, they still have time. So, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. That would be great just to go to the Dollar Tree and decorate yourself. And hopefully, you know, it stays up all week and people can see it if they forgot. Yeah. I love Jamie in the comments. Dollar Tree decoration queen can confirm Mm -hmm. um, and myself love some good decorations. Um, and he said last year gave everyone a simple metal water bottle and a thank you note handed to each dispatcher. Oh, and I love that because I think like that it doesn't like, you don't have to buy dinner every day. You don't have to get like massive presents, just that it's the act. It's the celebration. It's the taking the moment to mm -hmm. celebrate each other. Um, yeah. But what kind of um, resources have you used just to make sure we have time to share those? So I know uh, you have kind of a list. So if we want to go through those. Sure. Yeah. So in the past, um, I've used Pinterest, um, just whatever maybe kind of theme we're trying to fit in. We'll, we'll do that. Um, we've used postermywall.com to create the theme days. So that way it's not just, you know, we're document Monday is this, Tuesday is this. So we try to put a little bit of fun. And there's always the more artistic, creative ones who can do that. So definitely tap into those resources. We do have some artists. So if we need something decorated or painted, you know, they jumped out and, and did that. Um, even the templates. So I did find that where people are getting ready for Dispatcher Week this year, they're being very proactive. Or maybe I'm just noticing it more and more now. Um, but yeah, even because um, I had about invited Valerie to come on from the Tenacious Telecommunicator. Valerie and Toby have done a lot. They put out the... On their website, they have email templates for meals, for gift cards, the daily themes, gift ideas, even a letter for your local government to, to recognize. And then that way, you don't have to sit there and think, what would I say in this? It's already done. They've, they've done the work for you. So just fill in your agency and take advantage of those resources because we're all doing the same thing. We're all you know, celebrating the same um, for the most part. So take advantage of those templates that are already out there. Um, let's see. And then vendors, I, I put that on the list because vendors love to promote. They, you're already spending a lot of money with them. And sometimes they don't know it's dispatcher week just because, you know, they're in, in vendor world. Um, but sometimes if you reach out and you just say, Hey, we're getting ready next week, you know, um, and just kind of see, and especially if you already have that good working relationship with them, you can just casually mention it. And then as soon as they hear you might need something, um, they're great with that. And some of the vendors that I work with are so flexible. They understand we have four shifts. They know that, you know, when night shift comes in, they want fresh, hot meals. We're not going to hold it over from day shift. And they're being very gracious and done multiple orders so we can get that into that group. So I think that means a lot, making sure that those dispatchers coming in have something just for them. And it's not the leftovers that day shift didn't want. So for me, that was always important to make sure night and day are treated differently. They were always the same, but they got fresh for them. You know, no one wants that leftover salsa jar from Taco Tuesday. No, you get a fresh jar of salsa <laughs> with your tacos. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's a, that's a huge thing I hear across the board is like mm -hmm. somebody brings in food or treats or something, which is appreciated. Do not get me wrong, mm -hmm. but they just don't maybe understand like we have two shifts or three shifts. Mm -hmm. So then day shift, maybe evening shift, you know, enjoy this lovely snack and then night shift gets and they're like, well, according to the crumbs left on this yeah. tray, it looks like these were brownies. Um, so yeah, I think that's huge too, that 
you know, people are, then they're definitely willing if you just explain it to them to help accommodate. Yeah. Them. And I tell them, if not, it's no big deal. We'll, we'll find a way to divide it out or we'll, you know, compensate for that. So everyone does get the same, but, but every time I mentioned that they've been very understanding. And then I know one year we did um, firehouse subs, they do the catering. And so they have the individual box lunches. So that worked out even better. We had to totally clean out the fridge and make room, but that's fine. It has to get cleaned out anyway. And then we went ahead and we put night shifts with their name on it. And we let them know, hey, whenever you're ready to eat, it's going to be in there waiting for you. And it's individually packaged with your name on it, your order. So I think, you know, when you when you do food like that for a large group, I think you have to keep that in mind because, you know, we don't all have the same hours. And I, I'm not going to be there 24-7 serving them. But I do have that in the back of my mind um, whenever they come in. It's ready when I, whenever they want it. Yeah, no, I love that. Um, really quickly. Kathleen mm-hmm. in the comments says, it's taken me several years, but I finally have people helping me out. We don't have a director or supervisor. She says, the old one has been up to me. Um, but again, that's awesome because it is. Sometimes we have to just step up and, and take care of it. And then eventually people do help. Um, and then I love what Melinda said. We got a red carpet to lay in the hallway leading to the doorway. We purchased ours from Amazon, which you can also check with local theaters to see if they have one you can rent or borrow. And I think that's great too, because again, super simple, but it's kind of like, you know, well, yeah. all those awards you're giving out, you got to yeah. <laughs> make the yeah. red carpet. Yeah. Okay. No, I love those. Uh, so That's Amazon, awesome. I know Etsy mm-hmm. always have stuff. Um, I'm trying to think of the, Oh, other. I was going to mention um, one more thing that, um, so I started about six years ago. Um, I realized that whenever we would have a 5K, um, we would do it like Saturday mornings and that's not conducive to shift work. So I actually started the thin goal line 5K and every year we would reach out and invite other dispatchers. So it was really cool getting to meet the people that had the same days off as you did. And you talk to yeah. them all the time, but now you get to meet them face to face. And then, um, and it's, we don't have any sponsors. We just, there's no medals. There's no t-shirts. We literally just meet up and walk or, or run, mostly mm-hmm. walk and a lot of talking, <laughs> it's a lot of networking. Um, but it's something is that we just go to a trail that's already marked off and we just go and, you know, maybe we'll go out for brunch later. It's super easy. And then not everyone's going to do it. I get it. Not everyone wants to do a 5K. So leading up to that, I did the, the step challenge, you know, so you could get ready for the 5K. And it, mm-hmm. we found out it was it was less intimidating for people. Um, that maybe they'd wanted to, you know, get started in races and it was just more informal. So, um, so just yeah. meet up and go for a walk with your squad. Yeah, yeah. Or just even, I mean, depending on where other centers are in your area, maybe reach out and see if there's something that, you know, your one shift and their matching shift can do. And then like the others can match up that way just to help people kind of network and connect. And like you said, like these people who you talk to regularly, Mm -hmm. but you wouldn't know if you walked down the street and walked past them, then you get a chance to actually meet them. So yeah. And like, it's kind of outside the box too, right? Like you wouldn't think, oh, we can celebrate by doing a 5k. I would not celebrate by doing this. <laughs> it could be there for the photo op. And like, <laughs> yes. yes. But when you add the, like, you meet people, hang out, I'd be like, okay, I, I'll come for that. Um, yes. <laughs> so if you are going to do something like that, maybe lead with that part. Don't lead with the 5k part. Okay, yeah, that's true. Right. Yeah, and then the, the most important is that um, we have two different dates. So we did, I chose Tuesday and Thursday because that falls on the second day off for shift work because you know, the whole, you know, showing up Saturday at 9am doesn't work for everyone, but a Tuesday or Thursday is so random for admin, but for shift work, you're like, Oh cool. I'm off that day. So yeah, yeah not everyone's going to show up, but that's okay. The people that want to be there show up and we always have a great time. So I'm excited. Yeah. I like this comment. We don't ask for free food, but a lot of the times that we mentioned at the local restaurants that it's for 911 dispatchers, they offer for free. There's also that too. It can be really awkward. Like we don't want to ask for, but a lot of times, you know, it is a role that people, if they hear that they're, you know, like, oh, okay, how can we help you? Um, we have a lot of times air methods, um, which are local like helicopter rescue. Um, they'll bring stuff in because we work with them so often. Um, calling them as a resource. So even other, other kind of public safety like that, reach out to your law enforcement departments, your fire rescue. Mm -hmm. Um, I will say, I know that they are not always, you know, they don't acknowledge it. They don't, um, you know, seem to give up, like not give us, but acknowledge or always show their appreciation, but don't let one department that like doesn't do something or, um, anything like that stop you. And you know what, when police week rolls around or fire EMS or fire or EMS week roll around, don't let that stop you from showing appreciation to them. 
um, because I see that from time to time too. Um, a lot of, in the Facebook comments, people say, hey, what are you doing for a dispatch week? And I'll see all these comments like nothing. We don't get celebrated. Oh, that mm-hmm. must be nice. Oh, no one. D- Again, we said it. I feel like we're just going to keep saying it. Do it for yourself. Do it for mm-hmm. the people at the console next to you. Yeah, let's put it out there so that the, the world knows that we are first responders and we can get properly classified. So that includes showing up for yourself and celebrating yourself. So we can do this. And then the more you put on social media, um, the better. And then that's how we educate people. Hey, this is Dispatch a Week because the public has no idea about it. So let's go ahead and educate them and show them what we do, that we can have fun during a serious job. Yeah. And Jamie sent a letter to the fire chiefs. A few of hers are going to bring a meal or treats next week, nice. which again, sometimes I would venture to guess that they d- didn't even know it was a thing potentially. Sometimes they just don't know. Like I think you mentioned before too, like you have to just let them know and then like, Oh, okay. Um, uh, one we found out the National Animal Control Week is the same as National Telecommunicator Week. I had no idea kids, either. <laughs> but we didn't have anything for them. Oops. I mean, but, you know, it's not intentional, but now we know. Yeah, now now we know, though. So, oh, that yeah. would be so fun, though. You could bring in the puppies or, and kittens and, you know, put it on social media. Hey, we're celebrating both Animal Control Week and Dispatcher Week. You know, yeah. that, that's so yeah. great. April is 911 Education Month as well. So there's just a lot of tie-ins that you can talk to the public about 911, include that information, not because we want anything from them, but again, just all about that education, um, full picture of you know 911 and dispatchers. Uh, but we are coming to the end. Uh, I was like, oh, you know, we don't have to talk the whole time. And now I'm like, I think we could just talk for three more I know. Hours. I still have stuff I haven't even talked about, but yeah, but this yeah. is great. I, I've got a lot of good ideas from the comments and then stuff just in conversation. I'm like, oh, I got to remember that. I got to write this down. Is there any um, resources, any kind of last few that you want to mention before we go? Um, so yeah, the 901 Tree of Life, um, that's been really heavily promoted. Um, it, it's it's free. Just go online, share an inspiring story. And I think it sends an email to the dispatcher that you nominate. Um, and then Humanizing the Headset has a Just for Fun resource page that Brendan and Trey put together. On Scene First, it has prizes they're giving out. So sign up for that. So there's so many great resources and people are giving stuff away. You just have to, you know, keep your eyes open for it. Yeah. And the Tree of Life, remind me, is that through 911.gov? Yes. Okay. So yeah, I think if you just go to 911.gov and then they have a link or like the page that will walk you through all that stuff. So yeah. Uh, all great. And yes, echoing that, keep your eye out. I just saw on Facebook, like another giveaway for the week. Um, so check out, you know, different dispatch training businesses, vendors, all those things, uh, because they all might have something going on, uh, really quickly. Um, next, our next episode of ECC essentials, um, we are going to be talking about Canva. So if you are familiar with Canva, it's kind of like a Adobe for people like me who don't want to learn how to do that um, and want something a little quicker. But Kaylee Green out of North Carolina is going to join me and we're going to talk about using Canva for uh, presentations, public education, social media posts, um, all the things. So then next year, when you want to do certificates for your Dispatch Week awards, you'll know how to have Canva and get in there. So I will put the link in the comments to sign up for that now for anybody watching. Um, that will be April 20th. Thank you guys all for joining us. Anybody listening, watching the replay, then be sure to like our ECC Essentials Facebook page to keep up to date on all the upcoming episodes. And thank you, Erica, for joining me again um, for another episode. We thank just you. this was really fun. I yeah, I'm excited now. <laughs> yeah, so many good ideas. Yes. Um, hopefully, you guys all have taken them away. And if you ever have any questions, feel free to reach out to us and enjoy the rest of your day.